Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we're going to talk about Haley Baldwin's recent interview with Call Her Daddy host. I don't care. Anyway, she was talking not just about threesomes and her favorite sex position, doggy style, spoiler alert, which I find odd. Doggy style? I don't know. I'm a missionary girl. I like the closeness. You know, I don't know. I don't. Anyway. She was also talking about how she and Selena Gomez, Justin Bieber's Whispergoos, ha ha, ex-girlfriend, are actually cool, sort of, respectful. The word respect kept coming up over and over again. So look, in our last video about love is blind couple Sal and Mallory, right? We talked about how to deal with seeing your, your ex with a new girlfriend. And in this video, we're going to talk about what if you're on the flip side? How do you deal with your man's ex? How do you make things cool? Like what position sort of do you take about it? Is Haley taking a really smart path? Like is she from like a branding strategy, like a personal branding strategy? Is she like doing the right thing or should she be coming out in a very different way? I have been from all these different points of view. I've been in every possible scenario dealing with a man's ex. And I will tell you what works, what doesn't, and what thing you absolutely should never say unless you want to drive him closer, if not back, to that ex-girlfriend. We're gonna break it all down, but before we do, I just wanna remind you guys to join the Shalantourage. It is our cozy little clubhouse on the internet where you're gonna get access to exclusive videos and podcasts, a bunch of story times from me, and actually the story time I put up yesterday, which you have access to all the stuff that's ever been on there, truly I think is the best video I've ever done. It is. It's comparing being single with being in a state of grief because if grieving means, you know, grief is like love with no place to go, is that kind of what it's like to be single? I'm gonna kind of bridge these two concepts. We're gonna talk it out and tell you like how to get out of that grief state. Plus you get daily text messages from me, access to Telegram chats that I'm on so you can connect with other shalligators. Plus you get access to all of our Alpha Academy sexy tutorials. So they're all on there. You can watch them forever and go ahead and sign up right down there at the link in the bio. It's so much fun. Also, I told you guys this at the end of the last video, just tease it a little bit. Within the next few days, we are launching something I've been working on literally for a year and a half. Get him back. The five step manipulation master plan to get your ex-boyfriend back. Now you can interpret get him back in a few different ways, can't you ladies? You can interpret it as like, I want him back in my life or get him back. Get back at him. Sometimes we just need to win. Sometimes we want love back in our life. We've changed, the situation's changed, we blew it early on, we were too dramatic, whatever, and we want to redo. I can tell you how to do that. But I can also tell you how to flip the script on a fuck boy and get back in the driver's seat. Get him to chase you. Get your power, get your confidence back. Change the game. So no matter which point you're coming from, love, or maybe even just revenge, this manipulation master plan will tell you exactly what to text, exactly what to post and not post, exactly what friends to stay in touch with. It is so comprehensive. It's so much information. It's honestly fantastic and it's launching soon. I, I'm hoping Friday, I feel like I'm in labor with this thing and I just want it to get here, but I wanna make sure everything is like pretty perfect, pretty perfect for you guys. So just stay tuned for that. Okay, let's talk about exes, but you know what? I gotta, I have to issue an apology. I really do. Because in my video about Sal and Mallory, I said something that was very, very out of character for me. And when it left my mouth, I was like, I don't agree with that. But like in the moment, I didn't apologize for it. And some of you guys called me out on it. And I really want to apologize that I called Sal's new girlfriend hot and glamorous. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm gonna tear up giving this apology because I'm just so sorry. What, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? This chick is so obnoxious, intern obnoxious. Like what? So this is the, the rare apology. You know I'm not an apologizer. You know I'm not sorry for anything, but I am sorry I said that. So just go ahead and mark this day on your calendar. The time of rare apologies from Shallon Lester. Okay, Haley Baldwin sat down with, what is her name? 
the call her daddy chick, Alexandra Cooper. Yeah, she seems chill. So Haley opened up about Selena Gomez revealing she has spoken to Selena since she married Justin in September 2018. This is what she said. It's all respect, it's all love. There's no drama personally between her and Selena. And Alex Cooper asked, have you talked to her? And she said, yes, and Selena doesn't owe me anything. Neither of us owes anybody anything except respect. I respect her a lot. I think there are no expectations between us. I respect her. Everybody on our side knows what happened and we're good and we can walk away from it with clarity and respect. That has brought me a lot of peace. We know what happened. It is what it is. So when she say we know what happened, what she's referring to, and she said this in the interview, is that Justin, in her words, closed the chapter with Selena before he ever got with Haley because the timeline was very murky. So there was a whole lot of rumors that like, Justin was seeing both girls at the same time. Blah, 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 blah. And that was a huge source of like the hate Haley has gotten on the internet from Selena Gomez. Her demented, psychotic, ugly, dumpy, useless fandom. Absolute fucking basement dwelling, mouth breathing, slack jawed yokels. I have never seen a more pathetic, embarrassing group of people on the internet as Selena Gomez fans. Never. Even Miley Cyrus says it. She's like, whenever I wake up and I get death threats, it's always from like a, a Selenator, Selena Gomez, like somewhere in their Twitter username. Like they're just the biggest bunch of fucking losers. And like, I'm sorry, Selena and Justin dated what, like a decade ago? Like that was their heyday? Let's be generous and say a decade ago. Let's say that those people, let's say that they were 11 years old when that was going on, right? When they were like, oh my God, they're my favorite couple. Let's say on the on the young side, they were like 11 to 13. They are now 21 to 23 years old. Michelangelo was 24 when he carved the Pieta. And do not come at me and say, well, people died younger back then. They actually didn't. If you weren't giving birth a peasant or in a war, which Michelangelo was none of those three things, you lived like into your 70s and 80s. The reason the like median death age was so low is because the peasants didn't have a lot of food. They died in battle and they died giving birth. But if you were an upper middle class noble person as Michelangelo was, you lived a long time. My point is, my point is, it is actually a very apples to apples comparison. So if you are a Selena Gomez fan and you were over the age of 13, you are incredibly pathetic. Like, I'm sorry, what the fuck is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What on earth is your life about? What is your life about right now? Why are you here? You don't know, do you? You waste your time defending these celebrities who literally don't know or care if you live or die. And you, you might be saying, you talk about celebrities too. Bitch, I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid, sweetheart. I own five homes. Liquid. Okay, I don't have, I don't have one single mortgage in my portfolio. So you want to... Talk into my, talk into my ears. Let me, let me hear what you have to say. Just got that out of the way. I will not be apologizing for that rant ever. So I told you, you guys got like the one apology I'll issue in like in a decade period. Okay. So Haley says, no, she never stole Justin from Selena. That's not in her character. And yes, she said, I would never want to get into a relationship and get engaged, be married to them and think in the back of my mind, I wonder if that was really like closed for you in terms of that chapter. She also revealed that yes, her favorite position is doggy style. Interesting. And that she probably wouldn't ever have threesomes because she said her and Justin have worked really hard to get to this place of trust. Like he's had enough sex. <laughs> he's had sex with all the people. There's no more people. You know, and I don't, I don't blame her. We could actually do a video about threesomes. You guys want a video about threesomes and how to make them work? Like, I think I did, didn't I do that? I feel like I did that one time. I don't know. All right, let's talk about dealing with your man's ex. <sighs> now there's extreme situations where you are, I shouldn't use the word incentivized, but you are sort of required, I guess you are incentivized because ultimately it would be better for you to get along with this person. Nay, bond with them and become as close with them as possible. And that scenario is if you're the step parent. You know, if he's got kids, if this is a baby mama situation, 
a lot of my friends here in, in Bozeman, not a lot, but a few are divorced and they have kids with their ex and now the ex is like remarried or is dating someone and I'm like fuck that hoe fuck that trick ass hoe I'm gonna put on my hoops I'm gonna grease up my hands let's go fight we riding and she's like no we're not riding because like I'm doing this for my daughters you know like I'm trying to create a harmonious relationship for the benefit of the children and honestly like it will hurt more in the long run it'll be more of a pain to me if she's my enemy Then she's not picking them up from soccer practice. Then she's not feeding them the right foods. Then she's not helping with the homework. Like she, it's better if she's on my side. I'm playing the long game and I'm like, yeah, fine. For most of us, that isn't quite our situation. Maybe not yet, maybe down the line, but maybe not yet. Maybe you're dating someone and he's just got this ex. And for whatever reason, she's still in his life. The first place to start is, what is that reason? What is that reason? If y'all don't have no kids, maybe you have mutual friends, but okay. If you don't share pets, if she is in his life and you can't immediately think of the reason, there is a reason you just maybe aren't going to like it, right? I'm not saying that your ex wants, I'm sorry, that your man wants his ex around because he still wants to be with her, is in love with her. Because again, like if you guys aren't married, like he could go be with her. He could go be with her unless she's in a relationship, but he could still go be with her or at least be single pining away from her. He doesn't have to get in a whole new relationship. Sometimes what people want is the constant flattery. They want the triangles. They want two women feeding off of each other. And so now this is the subsequent question you have to ask. Does your man want you to be cool with his ex? Or does he actually, in those deep dark places we don't talk about at parties, kind of fucking love that you guys hate each other? Does he kind of love it? Because then he's in the middle, he gets to play peacemaker and be the mature one on both. Oh, I'm just so mature, ladies, ladies. Don't grease up your hands now, take off the hoops. Does he constantly get the flattery of both women? Why are you with her? Well, why aren't you with me? People do not stay in dynamics without some sort of emotional payoff. And listen, we look around at life and we see people in bad relationships as we deem them in toxic situations as we would see it in our lives. And we're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? To them, they are getting an emotional payout from that. It wouldn't be a payout that we would consider positive, but to them, it is somehow. I don't like a lot of drama and fighting in my life. I mean, I say that, but then historically, I look back on my life when I was younger and that's exactly what I was constantly creating. So clearly on some level, I did. What was I getting out of it? I was getting distraction, stimulation. I was getting a way to express my feelings that I was too chicken shit to put an actual constructive name to. Hey, I'm anxious about my future. I'm not happy with my body. I feel impotent at work because I'm too wussy to ask for a raise and I keep doing other people's work. I know, let's have six vodka sodas and start a screaming match with my boyfriend. Because I just, I have all this emotion and it's swirling. How is it gonna get out? I just gotta let it out. I really don't care the form it takes. I really don't care, but I digress. So, why is he in her life? Does he want you to have a positive, healthy dynamic? Let's say, because I'm feeling (laughs) optimistic and generous today. Not really, but I'm willing to pretend. Let's say that everything is on the up and up, that maybe it's a small town and you're gonna run into her or they take the same hockey classes, whatever, that she is in his life for a reason that has nothing to do with him wanting her back or playing you guys off each other. She's in your sorority. I mean, who knows? There's a million different ways and reasons she could be in your orbit that you need some concrete tools on how to deal with her. Would you like to know the number one thing never to do? Oh boy, have I learned this the hard way. Don't call her ugly. I know she probably is. Of course she is. I know that. Don't say it. Here's an example. 
I was out with my friends a few weeks ago and we met this boy. We were like all talking. We we're like, come sit with us. He was like our bartender. I was like, oh my gosh, come sit with us. And he was talking about, he's like, I just broke up with my girlfriend. I was like, oh, when? He's like 30 minutes ago. I was like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, like 30 minutes ago. And and he was like just bitching about it. Like she's really ungrateful and unthoughtful. Like I would do all these thoughtful things for her. I would bring her lunch and I would like make sure her car was washed and her, I'd make her coffee. And she never said thank you. And she would never do anything thoughtful for me. And I was like, that's so cute. Like clearly your love language is like acts of service. And this bitch is, is like, I don't know who, not, not that, you know? And he's like, yeah, she's just like, she kind of sucks. And I'm like, you know what? Honestly, I deserve better. I was like, good for you, Parker. And one of the girls was like, do you have a picture? Let's see her. And he was like hot, like tall, hot, like, mm, mm. I might've made out with him that night, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> he was single, <laughs> fresh still counts. He pulls out his phone and it was sitting on the table and we all like leaned over it and we were like, huh? Ah! We like reared back in disgust, disgust. Like we had seen a portal to hell itself. This bitch was hideous. Frizzy hair. I mean, monstrous. She also looked a thousand years old. And I think he was like 23. I know. I know how I am. Okay. She, I was like, oh, we were all awful. And he, he, I thought would be like, thank you guys. Thank you. Right. I'm hotter. I can do better. No, 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 no. He was so insulted so insulted. He's like, you guys are a bunch of self-absorbed bitches. And I was like, well, oh, correct. I mean, thank you. But Parker, like she's ugly and you're hot. I'm like, I'm team you. What do you, what do I need to say she's hot? He's like, she's a really nice person. And we were like, you spent the last 20 minutes like dragging her to hell, telling us how much she sucks. Suddenly she's nice. What? aren't we supposed to agree that she's ugly and that you're better off without her? Like, are you out of your mind? It's not about mind. It's not even about heart. It's about ego. It's about ego. We must constantly step into the shoes of men. You know, when we're trying to figure out what are, what on earth, earth are they thinking like what is their motivation it is always ego it is always ego that is the only word three letters ego okay b-o-y e-g-o m-a-n the only thing we ever need to assume about a man is that he is coming from speaking through and viewing life through the lens of his own ego now what is ego it's your sense of self and identity it's how you think of yourself it's not necessarily how the world sees you. Now, ideally, these two things overlap, right? Who you think you are and who other people think you are are one and the same. You've reached this perfect golden zen moment of self-awareness. Most people are about here. I am just, I'm such a hard worker and I'm so loyal. I don't like drama. You smashed a Bud Light bottle over some chick's head at the bar. You know, like it's very far apart. And when we tell a dude who thinks of himself as like manly and attractive and like, I'm super capable and I'm this, oh, actually your girlfriend's a she beast? Like I wanna harpoon her or something? She's a goblin creature just slithering around town. That reflects poorly on him as a man. That's all he hears, that's all he sees because it challenges his idea of who he is. How can I tell myself I'm attractive if I'm dating an ugly person? Attractive, hot people don't date uglies. They date other hot people. So if she's ugly, then I'm ugly. It always circles back to them. It always circles back to them, right? And think about it, think about it. It's embarrassing kind of, like when we break up with someone and our friends were like, thank God I hated him so much. I hated him so much. Like on one hand, you're like, why didn't you tell me? They're probably going to say, uh, we tried to, you were not having it. But it's also a little cringy. It's like, you guys really, you thought he was dumb. They're like, ugh, yes. Like he was so gross. Oh, I know. And his arms, his ropey little fettuccine arms. Ugh. It's embarrassing because you think, okay, so he was beneath me. And yet I couldn't even make that relationship work. <sighs> okay. 
If someone's beneath me, they should worship me. It should be honestly kind of the best relationship in my life, you know, you think. So the fact that it wasn't means maybe he's not beneath me. Maybe I have fettuccine arms and a whole pasta body in general. But that's not what it means. But that's where our ego, who, you know, take hijacks everything and takes control of everything and sees anything anyone else says as how it relates to us. But what about me? Like, it's the most narcissistic reaction in the world. Stop yourself. Recognize that that's going to go on. Recognize like, okay, that's how I'm going to feel on the surface level. But underneath that, I'm a little more high level to be like, no, no. Listen, we all date people beneath us at one time or another. It doesn't mean I am on that level. It means I need to level up and I need to examine why I was drawn to someone beneath me. Did I think, did I assume they were just going to adore me? And I really didn't feel like putting in the work into a relationship with an equal. I didn't want an equal. I wanted to be worshipped. Well, that backfired as it almost always does. Okay? But that's a topic for a different time. But this is why you don't come in hot, guns a blazing. Look at this fugly bitch, cankles! Boo, 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 boo. Because that is going to make the man defend his choices, aka defending his very sense of himself. Her and him are inextricably linked. The only exception to this could be is if you know that girl completely independent of him. Like, no, 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 I hate Bethany. She poured paint in my hair when I was six. Okay, so she can fuck off and die. Even then though, even then, he is not gonna feel great about dating someone you deem as a monster. It reflects poorly on him. So what do you say? What do you say when the phone is sitting there on the table and you look over and peer into the gaping maw of the hideous abyss that is his ex-girlfriend? Are you supposed to be like, beautiful, I love it. <laughs> and she's so pretty. You don't have to go that far, okay? You don't need to swallow that acid of pretending like she's a smoke when she's honestly a monster. You can just say, I'm sure she had some really great qualities. That's it. That's it. I'm sure she had some really great qualities. And you know what? In your mind, come up with one to sell it a little bit better. And you know what? I want it to be stupid. I want it to be a stupid, small quality. She really knows how to tie her shoes. I mean, the knot is always very even. You know, that's that bow. It's great, she does it fast. She is a great shoe tire. She's got some really great qualities, I bet. See, you sell it even better. Just with that silly example in your head, because you're like, <laughs> like laughing to yourself in your mind. That like, you know, this Gorgon that he put his dick inside of once upon a time has nothing going for her. But like, I feel like she always knows how to pick a really ripe cantaloupe. Good. Bless her heart. Good for her. Good for her. Because remember in the last video about Sal and Mallory, I said, when you deal with your ex and his new chick, you want to have the Kate Middleton effect. You know, it's like, oh, how are you? Oh, that's so nice. Well, I must be going. It's short, sweet surface, the smile that doesn't quite touch your eyes. It's a little love for everyone, not a lot for anyone. Hello, little people. Oh, so nice to see you. Are those flowers? Bless your heart. That is the attitude you want to take towards his ex. Oh, yeah, she seems so nice. Just the smallest ripple of pity, just the smallest, because you still want him to know he done leveled up. Don't let him forget that. You don't want to be like, wow, fuck, she is a, sm she is a smoke show. Is that a, she's on the Victoria's Secret runway. That's interesting. Mm -mm. You might think that not every feeling needs to be shared. I've got news for you. Honesty is honestly for losers. But you don't convey that. It's, I'm sure she has some great qualities, right? Because you want to know what he has to say back to that. If he's like, oh my God, she did. She was so kind and so beautiful and her tits, like, mm. and yeah, our family was great. Oh, I'm sorry, is someone trying to lose a finger tonight? Because it kind of sounds like it's you. I want to know if that's what's just under the surface. I very much believe in giving people rope. If they're going to use it as a lifeline, great. They're going to pull themselves towards me, fantastic. But maybe they'll fashion it into a noose and fucking hang themselves. 
I give people a lot of leeway because I want to see what they do with it. I want to see what people do. So if I'm like, oh yeah, she seems nice. Oh, she was the best. Or he could be like, you know what? Yeah, she's okay, but she's not you. (laughs) Or is he going to swing the opposite side? Like, well, she wasn't. She was a fucking bitch and she was psychotic and I hate her. And one time she... That's also bad because the opposite of love isn't hate. It's apathy. So if he's like, she was the best, bad. If she was the worst, also bad. When I speak about my ex who cheated on me almost relentlessly throughout our entire relationship and was <laughs> gaslighting me, that was great. I, I, I touch down on that and I immediately fly away. Oh yeah, my ex. Like, no, we don't talk. He cheated on me constantly, but you know, live and learn. That's it. I'm not like, and another thing. Like, I don't go into detail. I don't pull up screenshots. I don't, you know, I just don't. The opposite of love is not hate, it's apathy. I'm not gonna ever pretend like I have respect for that man because I don't. But I'm also not going to dwell in that space any longer because somebody you're dating, they wanna see that you're able to move on. Like Haley said, she wanted to know that chapter was closed. But what if you have to interact with this person? You know, I I think it's kind of odd that Haley and Selena have spoken Again, like if there's no kids involved, pets, like why do you need to speak to this person? I mean, in a one-on-one clear the air, it's all respect kind of way. I just, I don't know that that's something that should be required of you. I'm sorry. And I think if, if that is genuinely how you feel, I think you can say that to your boyfriend. Like, I don't find that appropriate. I don't really know you don't, you can throw out the word appropriate. Just be like, what, tell me, and I don't mean this in a sarcastic way, what do you hope that will accomplish? Like truly what, what do you want that to do? You know, because what's the point of going into a conversation if I don't really have like a goal? So what do you, what do you think? Maybe this bitch has been harassing you. Like, mm, Selena has been harassing Haley. Like she's always liking mean tweets about her and reposting things. She's just so, ugh, the whisper goose. Oh, I'm a loser to love me. It's a goose whispering. I see geese all the time. And believe me, I know exactly what they sound like when they whisper. They sound like Selena Gomez. So maybe she was clearing the air. Like, maybe this is a very sanitized version of what happened. Maybe it was, you need to fucking move on. Okay? I have no ill will against you until you make ill will. So maybe it's that. Maybe you are trying to come to some sort of peace so that everyone can move on. Don't do what, in from the Love is Blind video, Sal's new girlfriend did. She's such a piece. She went up to Mallory. She's like, hey, I just want you to let you know, like, I, you know, like, you're not a threat. Like, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. Trish. Like, we know what you're doing. Like, that's such a bitch move. Like, ugh, gross. Like, it's not the high road. It's the mean road. And, like, everyone, I can see it. You know, I assume everyone else can see it. And thank you guys again again for calling me out on saying this person is hot and glamorous. Again, I apologize from the bottom of my heart. That truly is not me. That's not who I want to be ever, is to be giving snaps and claps to somebody who is quite frankly, incredibly obnoxious and not glamorous. And I think had lipstick on her teeth, but that's fine. So here's something you can say to his ex. Hey, you know, I really believe in like trusting the path of our lives. And I think we're all where we're supposed to be right now. And, you know, hopefully there's no ill will between my boyfriend and you. And be sure to say my boyfriend, my boyfriend. Don't say Tyler, don't say his name, like between my boyfriend and you. Don't say your ex, him and you, like, no. She, that, that is no longer a possessive statement. It's possessive to you, okay? That's where the apostrophe and the S comes in. Hopefully there's no ill will will between you and my boyfriend. I don't have any ill will. You know, I really believe that it's healthiest for all of us to just keep moving forward on the path that we're on because God brought us to this place for a reason. And, you know, I think we're all where we need to be. I mean, that's neutral. It's kind, but not an open door. You know, it is firmly stating I want the past to be the past and you need to stay in your lane. You need to stay in your lane. We are in this one and this is where God has anointed it. You don't have to use God, you know what I mean. Just tailor this to your own liking. 
But we are in this path and you are in a different one. And we are meant to not be in the same one. We are meant to be on divergent paths. And you know what's interesting? Of all the people we should vibe the most with, you would think it would, like on paper, hear me out, be our boyfriend's exes because we probably have a lot in common, right? People tend to date the same kind of person over and over. And I know what you're thinking. I am nothing like Crystal. I am literally nothing like Crystal. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. Maybe we're more like these people than we want to believe, you know? And I think it's also really important that you pay attention to how he describes her. She's crazy. Well, you know what they say, behind every crazy woman is a man who made her that way. All of my cheating exes' girlfriends were crazy. Every chick who's in his DM, she's crazy. I was like, she is crazy. Because I wasn't strong enough to read the writing on the wall that he was the crazy one. He was the liar. He was the gaslighter. It wasn't these girls. I mean, two things can be true at once. They can be crazy, but he can also. Because typically sane people aren't constantly gravitating towards the crazy. And maybe you're an outlier to that. Maybe you're not. That's a whole separate video on how to deal with our crazy. So let's say though that this might be a baby mama situation where for whatever reason you have to get along with her. Maybe it's not even a baby mama. Maybe you guys work together. You're in the same sorority. You're in the same study group and you have to have some sort of working relationship with this person, some sort of harmony, however that manifests, whatever that means for some kind of greater good. Your grades, the project, the kids, whatever, whatever. I think it's okay and I honestly think it's respectful to just keep it real. Be like, Crystal, we're probably never going to be best friends. And it's ironic because clearly we have a lot in common. <laughs> Shallon Lester told me that joke. I'm sorry. But look, we need to get along for the sake of X, Y, Z. So let's put our personal feelings aside. We can hate each other in our diaries if we want to. But we actually do need to become at least allies for the sake of this greater thing that you want the kids to be growing up well, the project to get out on time, doing well in the law school exam, whatever it is. We both have this common goal. So we need to be mature, which I know that you are, and I know that I am. You know, give her the benefit of the doubt. I know that you are, I know that I am. We can do this. We can find the, like at least the common ground for the sake of this thing. Can't we? At the very least, I'm, I'm not saying that's going to move the needle on her behavior. Hopefully it will. Typically, if, if we tell people, hey, I know you're a this and it's a positive attribute, they will, study show, try to rise to meet that, you know? People live a label. Like if you tell someone they're a criminal, they're worthless, they're no good, they're no good, you know, they're just gonna burn out, that's usually exactly what happens. If you tell them they're a champion, I mean, they can get a messiah complex like me. If you tell them that, if you're like, hey, I know you're mature, I know you can handle this. They're like, yeah, I, I, I can handle this. You would be surprised. At least try it. Because look, I know that you don't feel that way. She's a dumb, dumpy bitch and you hate her fucking guts and you wish you could scratch your eyes out. I'm with you. But for the greater good, if there is one, this is the long con. This is the strategy. This is the strategy. Because listen, she's already kind of lost right? You got the guy. You're in a relationship that you want. Maybe she's in a relationship too. Great. Who cares? You win. You already win. So let's look at her from that Kate Middleton point of view. Oh, precious. And just keep it moving forward. Let me know your thoughts and questions on this. We can do more videos on this. And yes, we're going to be doing a video on Brad Pitt and Emily Ratajkowski and also Leo DiCaprio and Gigi Hadid. I know, I know, I asked you guys your thoughts, so I think we've got, I think we've got some good topics coming up. Uh, I will see you later, Shalligators.